and Dominic to come up. And then I would also invite, I'm, I can't invite the whole family up or we just, we'll tip the boat, you know what I mean, we'll just tip the boat. But uh, if the grandparents could come up, if, if you're grandma or grandpa, not great grandma or grandpa, just grandma or grandpa, you guys come up. Now I want to have you guys, everybody wants to see you, so you guys get up here. Okay. Yeah, right up on the stage. Right, just stay right here in the front. And just get yourselves positioned to make sure. Now, can everybody see up there? Can you guys see? Okay. And you guys have to stand kind of out of the way. <laughs> there you go. That's good. And that's good. Wherever, that's fine. That's fine. And, uh, all right, that looks good. That looks good. Well, this is a great day. Um, I just want you guys to know that uh, you have been a blessing to me. It's always uh, a privilege to see a young couple doing their best to serve the Lord. And uh, I just want you to know that I appreciate you and I love you. And I'm so happy that you guys are here. So, uh, friends, we've come today because Kayla and Noah have invited us to come. And we're sharing in this wonderful this precious, this very serious and joyous occasion. It's always such a blessing and a joy when a home gets blessed with a baby. I was at somebody's house on Saturday for just a few moments and, and I didn't realize that you know, there was a baby in the house and I'm sitting there at the table doing what I'm supposed to be doing and all of a sudden I heard the baby laugh. And this just warm, fuzzy feeling came over me and there's just something about a baby's laugh. Now, maybe not at 2 o'clock in the morning, but, but you know. Uh, overall, we, we know that, that Dominic... Marcus Wonderling has already been a blessing. And if, where's Nolan? Does he want to come up? I know he's not real good about coming up. So anyway, at any time, Nolan, if you want to come up here, buddy, you're allowed to. You're allowed to. But we do. We thank God for his life. We thank God for the health and the growth that he's provided uh, thus far in Dominic's life. And... Uh, I just count it a privilege that God has been so gracious to unite Kayla and Noah and your family in membership here at First Baptist. So today we're gathered to dedicate your home. Really, that's what this is about. Dedicating yourselves, your children, to the Lord. A few scriptures. This comes from Psalm 127, verses 1 through 5. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is, it is in vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sheep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. And then out of the book of Deuteronomy... God says this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. And here's the important part. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And so the bottom line is, is that this word of God that we know as the Bible should be center stage in your home. It shouldn't just be something that you do once a week and check it off. It should be the way that you live. 
That's what he's saying here. It's something that you, you build into the life of your children. And there is great reward for that. God established the home as one of the most vital institutions on earth. And God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And since that time, God has instructed us as parents to teach our children about the Lord. Now we know that Dominic has already been a great blessing to you and your entire family. And we can take our pattern, the way that we do this, for this service this morning, right out of God's Word. There's several accounts in the Bible of children being dedicated to God. One in the Old Testament that comes to mind is Samuel as he was dedicated to the Lord. But how about Jesus himself in the book of Luke? It says, Now when the days of her purification, Mary's purification, according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And so even Jesus was dedicated to the Lord by his parents, Joseph and Mary. So we're, we're just following with the, the pattern that is, is set forth in Scripture. And so we come here today to ask God's special blessing upon Dominic as we dedicate him to the Lord and, and to challenge you as his mom and dad, to be the godly mother and father that God is instructing you to be. One that will not just love and care for Dominic physically, but also love and care for him spiritually. And provide him with the training that he needs to one day accept the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. So, in this act of dedication, I'm going to ask you these questions. And if it is your intention to, to do these things when I ask them to you, please respond and say, we do. Do you, Noah and Caleb, present Dominic to God? We do. Do you stand before us and before God today seeking to be godly parents? We do. Do you commit before God and these witnesses that you will do all that is within your power to maintain your home where Dominic will be cared for and loved? And do you commit to rearing this child to love and honor God with all his hearts? We do. With that, I remind you again that God has graciously given you this child. He is a blessing from God. Yes, he belongs to you, but in a greater way, he belongs to God. I remind you of the great responsibility that is placed on you because of Dominic. God has given you the task of caring for his physical needs of clothing, food, shelter, love, and discipline. And even more importantly, I charge you with caring for his spiritual needs as well. You have the responsibility of seeing that Dominic is in God's house, learning about God. There's something special about coming together into a house where the Bible is taught and corporately together with a local New Testament church learning and growing together in Christ. I would ask at this time all of the extended family if you would just simply stand so that we can see the, the great network of support that you have. <coughs> Church family, I'm going to also speak to you and ask you these questions at this time. You can stay seated, however. But to the family and to our church family. Will you support these parents without intruding as they fulfill these promises? If so, please say we will. Amen. Will you help this child grow and mature in these ways and do everything that you can do to come alongside of Noah and Kayla and help to raise this young man 
in the fear and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If so, please say we will. Thank you. You may be seated. I congratulate you, Kayla and Noah, and I charge you with the responsibility to do your part, to give it the best shot that you have in this culture that, that is now running away from God in, in many, many ways, politically, economically, morally, and socially. God seems to be taking the back burner in so many ways. And so with my heart and with everything that I am, I ask you, I plead with you to, to stick with these promises and these covenants that you've made here today before God. This time I want to offer a prayer of dedication for the little guy and I get to hold him to do that. That's good. We don't want him we don't want him interrupting or anything. And just just so that you guys understand and, and know what we're up to here this morning. We believe that God loves each and every one of us. And we believe that as a child is brought into this world that he is under the, the love and the protection of God for a season of time. And we say that there's going to come a day in Dominic's life where he'll reach that age of accountability and, and all of a sudden he'll become aware of the difference between good and evil and, and, and then he will be responsible to God to make his own decisions. But until that time, he is under God's protection. And, and, and nothing that we're doing here today puts any more... Uh, power on him, the fact that we're dedicating him. What it is, is it's Noah and Kayla making a covenant to God saying, look, we know that he's a blessing from God and we're just giving him to God. We're asking for God's help and we're asking uh, that, that someday because of the parenting, because of what Dominic may learn here at church, that someday Dominic will of his own accord, of his own mind, be led by the Holy Spirit to ask Jesus Christ to be his Lord and his Savior. And that's what this is all about. We believe that every person sitting in this room must make that same decision. And so today as you've heard these words, I would challenge you to look deep within your own heart, with your own soul, and within your own mind. And ask yourself that simple question, hey, have I done that? Have I said yes to Jesus Christ? So let's pray. Father, it is with a great pleasure that we present Dominic to you today. Just as Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple to dedicate him to you, so do we dedicate Dominic here today. Lord, we ask for your help in raising him. We ask for your help, Lord, for those who are present here that will eventually become his Sunday school teacher and his kids' church leader and, and whatever kids' church camps or whatever it is, Lord, that he ends up uh, participating with because he is a part of this church. Lord, we ask that you would bless it. And Lord, we do pray, Holy Spirit, that you would work in his mind and his heart to eventually draw him to that place where he says yes to Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray your blessing upon Kayla, upon Noah, and Lord, upon each family member who has come out today. Lord, thank you for this awesome display of support and commitment to you. And it is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Now, I'm going to give him back to you, and I got just a little something here for you. <clears throat> this is a uh, 
a certificate that just basically commemorates what we did today, a certificate of dedication. And in this little bag, it's from your church family, um, is a little book. And it's called Shepherding a Child's Heart. And it is just full of, of wisdom and, and knowledge to hopefully come alongside and help you as you endeavor to be godly parents. So from your church family, we love you and we appreciate you. Now you guys have to stay up right up front here. You guys stay right up front. For, for our greeting time this morning, um, we're just going to ask that, that you all come up and, and uh, uh, express your love and wishes and greetings uh, to the family and to each other. And so at this time, we'll greet one another in Jesus' name. to bring him back from.
just told him to play through. But we just need to try to do what we can do to move along. As we uh, bring our greeting time to a close, we're just going to begin to sing our song and uh, continue to move on. So, let's sing. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my time in my life. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. Our Father and our God, we now come to you. And Lord, we thank you for the uh, patterns and the examples that you have set forth for us in your scripture, Lord, that when we have uh, good family events like a birth of a baby and, and stuff that goes on in our life, Lord, that we have something that we can follow. We have your word. And so, Lord, I again thank you for Noah and for Kayla for Dominic, for Nolan, and Lord, for all the families who are represented here today. Lord, I pray today that you will speak to each one of our hearts and our minds. Lord, you said in your scripture that you would write your word upon our hearts. And that's my prayer here today, Lord. I pray that you will speak through these feeble lips. And Lord, let this message be your message today and not mine. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Please be seated. We have lots of uh, good time to visit at lunch. 
and uh, that should be a great time. But I just wanted to say a few words this morning. And those of you who attend here regularly, right now you're saying, yeah, right, a few words. But we, we looked at some scriptures this morning as part of our uh, dedication service. We looked at Psalm 127. And, and this is the scripture that talked about, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. And then it goes on to say, it's vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows. And, and what this scripture is trying to teach us is, listen, if you don't base your life upon the word of God, and if you don't attempt to live your life in agreement with this word, then basically you're wasting your time. You can get up early in the morning and you can stay up late at night and you can work hard and, and you can do all of the things that, that this life requires us in order to build a house and to build a life. And oh yes, in the world's eyes, many of the, this, the world's people will look at you and say, oh my, you've really done well for yourself. Because you have a home and you have finances and you have all of the things that this world says these are the things that define success but I'm going to tell you that there will come a day in all of our lives where each and every one of us will give an account to the Lord and, and we'll have to basically come before God and, 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 and then all of a sudden we, we begin to somehow think that, that God's up there with His holy scales of, of justice and we begin to think, well, you know, I, I did some good things and, and, and my goodness, I, I know I've done some bad things but I hope my good things outweigh my bad things and, and that's how we somehow try to render this whole thing in, in, in our worlds and in our minds and folks, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You see, there isn't one person that's present here in this place that will ever be able to do anything to earn your place or to earn your way into heaven. Trust me, if it was up to the things that I have done, I wouldn't have a prayer. I wouldn't have a chance. You see, the Bible says here, that unless the Lord builds the house. And what that means is that all of us need to come to that place, that same place that Noah and Kayla came to today, where they simply say, Lord, you, you've blessed us with this child. And we're not going to shirk our responsibility. We're not going to, to blow that off in any way, shape, or form. But we're here to admit that we need your help. And that we want you to be the head of this family. You see, I'm not the head of this church. And our board of deacons isn't the head of this church. The trustees certainly aren't the head of this church. The head of this church is Jesus Christ. And you see, he wrote us the instruction book. And it's really not that thick of a book. You've probably read books that are thicker. But listen... All of the answers for life exist in this book. And that's what we're, we're, we're preaching this morning. That's what we're saying to you as, as parents, as grandparents, as aunts and uncles. We need to do everything that we can do to have influence in the lives of these children. To teach them about the Lord. That's what this is about. And even in the book of Deuteronomy where it says, you know, hear, O Israel. I can just see, remember Charlton Heston, you know, in the movie The Ten Commandments. You know, I can just see old Charlton standing there, hear, O Israel, you know, spouting off those scriptures. I love that movie, by the way. But, but, but the bottom line is it says that, that he's giving them all of these commandments. And, and, and see, he gave us commandments. He gives us these instructions. And what's the responsibility according to this verse? He says, you shall teach them diligently to your children. And might I submit grandchildren and great-grandchildren. 
And he says, listen to what he says. He says, you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. When you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And so guys, let me talk to you specifically for a minute. What do your grandsons see when they walk into your shop? Or, or your garage? Or your basement where you hang out, your man cave? Are there kind of some little calendars hanging up with scantily dressed women? Or is it all about beer? Is it all about, you know, the things of the world? What is it that we're teaching our kids? That's what he's saying here. He's saying, listen, this isn't just something that you come to church and you check the box off and you say, okay, I did the God thing. And then, and then you go live life and then maybe, oh, it's been six months or so. It's, it's coming up on Easter. Maybe I ought to come to church again. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, listen, I want you guys to buy into this to the point where this is how you live your life because everything that you do and say every day is going to influence that child. As he grows up, he's going to hear your conversation. He's going to see what kind of pictures you have hanging on your walls. He, he's going to, to, to understand what you're saying before you ever speak the first word. And so as you walk in the way, as you live life, as you lay down, are you tucking your kids in at night, saying a little prayer with them? You know, reading them a, a, a bedtime story that would teach them about the Lord. All of those things, those things matter. In the book of Mark... We find these words. For whoever desires, Jesus is speaking here, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Wow, what does that mean? That means if your entire focus in your life is all about you and yours and, and the only thing that you really ever make effort is, is to take care of yourself and, and you're your, your earning money and you're accumulating wealth and, and, and you're working hard and you're you know, being a good citizen and doing all of those things. If that's the only thing you ever focus on and all of your effort is to somehow make a life for yourself, then the Bible is saying that in the end, you're going to lose it because you gave no thought or no regard to the things of God. And it goes on to say, but whoever loses his life for my sake, Jesus said, and, and the gospel's sake, he will save it. And what does that mean? That means that in the simple little things of life, like being a parent, don't try to do it on your own. Just get over yourselves and understand and admit that you have to have God's help. Listen, I, I am the king of trying to do things my own way. And, and unfortunately, I was usually fairly good at what I did. You know, the pitcher on the baseball team, the quarterback on the football team, could kind of just halfway try in school and float along and get good grades. And so stuff came relatively simple for me. And I kind of got into a pattern of life where I just kind of started floating along. You know, and for a while that worked out fairly good. But oh, there came a time when floating along and coasting with God got me into a world of trouble. Got me into some very unpleasant, difficult circumstances. And I had to wake up and come to the realization that Rocky, if you keep living life according to Rocky's plan, you're going to wake up a very miserable man someday. And in the end, you're just going to throw it all right down the tubes. And so does that make me special? Does that make, is, am I trying to stand up here and say that I'm better than you now? That's not what I'm saying at all. I am not. I am no better than anybody. 
In fact, some of you know that I could be probably worse than a lot of you. But what I am saying is, is that I came to this understanding that I'm going to give my life over to God and say, you know what? I'm tired of living Rocky's plan. I'm ready to live God's plan. And I accept God's provision for my sin. In other words, I know that if I were to die in my sin, that there's no chance of me making it to heaven. So I bought in hook, line, and sinker to this whole idea that yes, Jesus did die on a cross. And yes, he was completely dead, fully dead. And yes, they did bury him in a tomb. And yes, I believe with all of my heart that on the third day he rose again and he showed himself to some 750 odd people. And there's not just biblical documentation of that, but there's also historical documentation of that. I believe that with all of my heart. And you see, God said that is how you're going to be able to spend eternity with me. It's nothing that I can do. It's, I can't be good enough. I can't give enough money in the offering. I, I can't be here. You know, I, I haven't missed a Sunday for X amount of weeks in a row. None of that is what determines my eternal resting place. It is, what have I done with Jesus Christ? What have I done? Have I believed it and accepted him? And you see, there's a difference between just believing. You could be sitting in your seat and say, you know what? Okay, pe preacher, I agree with you. I think you're right. See, that's not good enough, folks. Because the Bible says even the demons believe. It'd be like, I have a parachute. Okay, and I'm on the plane with you. And I'm saying to you, look, if you'll put this parachute on and pull this lever, it will save you from falling and being killed. Do you believe that? And you could believe that with all of your mind, couldn't you? But I'm going to tell you something. Until you put the parachute on, it's not going to do you a bit of good to just believe it. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's the way it is with Jesus and this Bible stuff. Yes, I want you to believe it, but I want you to apply it to your life. I want you to buy into it. Hook, line, and sinker. Jesus said it this way in that same scripture in Mark, now reading verse 36. He says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And folks, think about that for a minute. How are you spending your time? What are the things in life that you're chasing after? Are you gaining the whole world? Are you being successful? Hey, Rocky, you should see my stock portfolio. Man, this recent upswing in the market, my, my 401k has really rebounded and things are starting to look good again. And, and man, you know, uh, and you could tell me about all of your successes in life and I'm happy for you. And those things aren't wrong, folks. That's, please don't hear the wrong message this morning. I'm not speaking against any of those things. I want you to pursue those things. I want you to be successful. I want you to acquire wealth. God king, God's kingdom needs money. But listen, don't do it at the expense of your own soul. That's what Jesus is saying. He says, listen, what good will it be if you've acquired the whole world? If at the end... You lose your own soul. And so I'm saying to us this morning, we just simply need to get our priorities in order. We need to do the first things first. And, and, and this scripture that talked about building your house. See, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Now, how many of you have ever been around building a house? You've actually built some, haven't you? Or been around building them. What's the most important element of the entire structure? Come on, what is it? The foundation. Hey, you could have the most elaborate, beautiful home that you could ever imagine and you could spend all your time, money, and effort and, and fortune building the thing. 
But if you screw up the foundation, you don't have a whole lot, do you? And that's what he's saying here. He's saying, listen folks, get the foundation in order. And then go and, and be the person that God called you to be and, and do the things that God has blessed you to do and, and, and graduate from high school and go to college and, and do everything that you're going to do. Get married. You know, all those fun things that we get to do. Raise a family. All that's great and I love those things. But don't do it at the expense of giving away your soul in order to do it. That's the heart of what I wanted to say this morning. And I felt that it was fitting to close with this scripture. And I can honestly say that, that this piece of scripture is so true. I, I can speak to it as a father. My mom and dad can speak to it as parents and as grandparents. And I'm going to tell you, when this isn't happening, there exists a hurt with inside of a parent's heart that is undescribable. Oh yeah, we paint on the happy face and we say, Oh hi son, it's so good to see you. But inside our hearts are breaking when this isn't true. Now he's going to get fussy, huh? You know, he's good the whole time. When we get to the punchline, he's going to get fussy. How about it? That's great, though. I love it. I love it. Anyway, here, here it is. Here's what in the book of 3 John chapter, or excuse me, just verse 4. The book of 3 John, verse 4. He says this way, simple. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Man, that hits a home run right there. As a dad, Joel, I'm proud of you for being in the Marine Corps for, for almost 10 years. I'm proud of the three deployments. Aaron, thank you for your service in Iraq. Man, you guys, I'm proud of you for what you've done. I love the uh, accomplishments that you were able to, to do in school, you know, through the sports and just stuff in general in life. But you know what? This is true. It brings me the greatest joy to see you serving the Lord. Ashley, you're my daughter now. Brings me so much joy to know where you've come from and some of the situations and the circumstances that God has brought you guys through. And to see you serving the Lord, undescribable. Undescribable as a parent. And so I ask you, Mom, Dad, Grandma, Grandpa, what are you doing to contribute to your kids and grandkids and great grandkids someday serving the Lord? Are you living your life as an example? Or are you living a life that would eventually help to be the thing that pushes them away and say, well, you know, we don't really need God. We got all this and come on, let's think about it. Father, I love you. And Lord, today I pray that as we come and we sing this final song, that Lord, you'll knock on the door of our hearts. And that you'll just simply reveal yourself to us and that you'll make us aware that you're calling all of us to simply say yes to Jesus. Lord, my prayer is today that not one person who is here in this place will walk out of these doors until they've got things right with you, whatever that may be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Stand with me. We are going to sing, I'd Rather Have Jesus.
than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail spears ten than to be a king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather This world affords today. We're going to sing one more verse, and I just want to make you aware that, uh, again, we believe in prayer here in this church. I would encourage you to be praying to God right now, to be talking to Him, to, to be listening to Him. And uh, if you feel like you want to pray or you have any questions, you're more than welcome to come down here. I'll be happy to pray with you. Um, but you can also pray right there at your seats. And, uh, but I challenge you to listen to the voice of God and just have the courage to say yes to Him, whatever He might be speaking to you uh, at this time as we sing another verse. I'm going to just pray for uh, our lunch and our fellowship time after, um, afterwards. And uh, I hope you'll all stay. It'll be a good time. So let's pray. Father, I love you and I thank you for this day that we've been able to have uh, so far together. Lord, I do ask that you'd bless the food and I do thank you for the hands that have both provided it and prepared it. Lord, bless it to our bodies and uh, bless our time of fellowship together. And once again, we pray your special blessing upon Noah and Kayla and little Dominic and Nolan Lord and, and that home as, uh, as they make their best attempt in this sin-sick world to be godly men and women of God. Now go with us as we all uh, have lunch together and then go our separate ways. Just go with us today in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, thank you, and you're dismissed to go downstairs.